Folks, welcome back. Hang on. Oops. Oh, wrong way. Hold on. All right, that should be fine. All right, folks, welcome back. My name is Rudy. You're watching Alpha Investments. Today, we have a conversation answering another one of the Q&A. Big old questions that people want to know about. Hopefully the lighting is, uh, is okay for you guys. Um, today, one of the top questions on that Q&A video um, was, Rudy, how come uh, I've lived in Jacksonville for like 15 years in here in Florida, and anytime I go to a, like a card store, if I ask people about you, like everyone gets real angry and says, F that guy. And, yeah. So Rudy, can you explain why people uh, have that anger and attitude towards you? Did, do you? Was there a history like in Florida with you and LGSs? Um, I, I will give you my opinion. The short answer of this type of thing is no, there's not really a specific story. The long answer is I believe this is a very common trait to anyone that becomes kind of a big disruptor in any market or industry. My opinion has always been that over the years, I don't, I, I almost want to say there was never like, like nobody thought it would be possible for a dude in Florida to just blow up and kind of shake up the collectible card LGS cardboard world. And I think the fact of what I did was so impactful over the last eight years and the name Rudy is such a taboo name with a lot of small stores around. Like you, in, in this particular question and comment on the video, on um, my Q&A video, it says specifically Dan's cards. Dan's a really nice dude. Um, I've talked to him on and off many times over the years. Uh, many times I just haven't been to that side of Jacksonville. Keep in mind, I'm not really, like when people say Jacksonville, Florida, everybody pictures like downtown Jacksonville or like Dan's cards. And I'm actually barely in the city limits of Jacksonville. I'm actually more um, kind of in a different, almost a different, more towards St. Augustine, Florida. But I, I kind of go back and forth. So it's kind of weird on that. Jacksonville is just such a massive land area part of Florida. It's a little confusing to a lot of people. Uh, but anyways, I always thought Dan was a pretty amazing guy. Um, even some of the uh, the cool stuff in stores that I don't even know if they're still in North Florida. Um, I've been, I used to go there many times and the employees and people, even when they recognized me, they were always super nice. I never had any problems in real life. Um, I believe this goes back to that whole kind of copy pasta internet kind of cool thing because I think there's a chunk of people that always want to just kind of fit in in that kind of group think mentality so that if you're in a group of people i think the cool thing to do if you're on social media is to be kind of anti rudy because in real life i've actually met many of these people and actually 99 percent of the time everyone i've met i don't even have any specific stories in the last eight to ten years of meeting people at even everything from a flesh and blood event to a magic event to an actual lgs I never, I don't really have stories of people meeting and upset and being angry at me, the channel, or Magic, or Pokemon, or Flesh and Blood, or MetaZoo, or Weiss, and um, I'll go back to some of those card games in a second, but overall, I think a chunk of the response comes from people who just assume that's what you're supposed to say and do. I think another chunk of it is going to be legitimate people who believe, at least from their perspective, that their point of view is that I did a lot of damage and made a lot of cards more expensive than they normally would be. Vintage Magic, Sealed Product, Pokemon, and of course, you know, with the Flesh and Blood. Even in Weiss, I had a lot of, a lot of volatility when I started selling Weiss uh, three, four years ago. Um, I think um, you're always going to have a group of especially... Younger individuals that are very, how do I say this? Um, they don't like small business or capitalism or selling things or products. They don't believe, I don't want to just say like socialism type thing, but they don't like the concept of how I was born and raised with small business and trying to make a little business and sell things and make things. And um, I think a lot of people, especially in the younger generation, are not a fan of that capitalism, America kind of backbone of uh, the small businesses, the mom and pop LGSs and the mom and pop kind of um, small cap businesses 
um, that kind of built this country, at least in my point of view, in the last 50 to 100 years. Now, obviously, in 2024 almost, or I guess we could say 2024, in a, in a few weeks from now, in 2024, um, I don't think small business is much of a thing anymore. If you look at most shopping centers in most cities, the only real small business is going to be service businesses. Nails, hair, maybe, you know, drinks, restaurants, alcohol, smoke, I'm sorry, vape, maybe cannabis. You know, you know you're going to have a lot of more service, small type things like that. But overall, like, you know, the LGS, small video games, small... Most small businesses in most categories and most genres just aren't a thing anymore. So a lot of people, I, I always felt a lot of people um, who had other small businesses years ago became very angry and very, they tilted the blame on me for causing many stores to go out of business. That would be my theory. Um, I don't have any evidence of this. This is just my opinion. And I, and I believe that as the markets changed and, you know, post 2019, especially with the flashy era variants and mega print runs, boom and bust and all as the, as markets evolve, it's very easy for something to be left behind or fall apart or slowly kind of erode away in value till it goes out of business. That's very common in restaurants. Um, growing up in a very small mom and pop type of restaurant type of thing, um, I can tell you all what happens is if a, if a, if a couple opens a small taco store and sells tacos and what many times what happens is these couples are doing it for so long after five, 10, 15 years, they get very complacent. They get very stuck in their ways and markets in, you know, the world changes and it shifts away from what they're doing. And they don't like change and they tend to, you know, their brain tends to look for reasons that they are eroding in sales or value or profitability. I believe that they believe I am responsible for some of these stores going out of business. Now, whether or not I had much of an impact, I caused them to go bankrupt. I don't even know which store, maybe who these people are, but I would assume in their perspective, they believe that. Now, in reality, I'm sure, especially in 2017 through 2019, in the earlier days in my channel, I would assume that when I was, because uh, when I started the channel, the only reason we're here today is because of what you were saying in that question, which was, why did so many people hate you and know your name? Well, I learned, I told you all this many times over the years, I learned late 2016 that the key to getting free marketing and getting your name out there was allowing those people to come up with things that may or may not be true about you and just letting it free roam and let the natural market forces move along. Um, you know, when people put comments in the videos saying, oh, Rudy's this, oh, Rudy's uh, bankrupt or this and that, did you hear about this? Or, you know, instead of replying to comments and checking the comments and saying, oh, look, uh, look, you know, look, this guy says, uh, Looks like Rudy's secretly this, or Rudy's doing... Instead of trying to reply and set the record straight, or I, I've learned that it's better to just let things naturally flow. Um, I still am a pretty strong believer that most of you out there are pretty smart. And you're smart enough to realize and take entire situations in context to know what's true, what's not, and what's kind of, well, what is this person saying about that... LGS in New York is that LGS really that much of the devil or evil or why are they angry oh they, they bought a Pokemon box and then Pokemon I don't know reprinted uh, Chilling Rain and they lost money or Roaring Skies and now they said that that store in New York is ripping people off because they over they overcharge I'm sorry they're scalping the, the kids and the customer so you know a lot of that gets blurred like I said, we are in a special, the cardboard world is not normal like most businesses. You know, if I run Rudy's Taco Store and I sell you a taco for $3 or 10 tacos for 30 bucks, and then the next day I put a taco special where tacos are half price, you don't get all the customers that come back from yesterday yelling at you for overcharging them on their tacos the day before. That doesn't happen in restaurants, okay? If I go to a steakhouse and get a, 
I don't know, a filet or a New York strip steak, and it costs me 30, 40 bucks, but then I get a, a coupon on my phone for half off. People don't go back to the restaurant the next day angry or leaving bad reviews and because they overcharge or they scalped the, the customers that were hungry. Like that doesn't happen in the the industry and in the food restaurant world that I kind of grew up in and kind of working in waiting tables and bartending. So it was a big adjustment for me to go from food related and service related to the retail card world as I got older because I had a hard time understanding why it was so different. So back to the original question. My opinion is I think A, a chunk of people who are very angry when the name Rudy is said is because that's what everybody's been wired to do. Number two, we'll go back to that in a second. Um, it, I think there's legitimately some people out there that feel whatever went wrong, they bought, maybe I convinced them to buy something, maybe they watched a video where they thought, you know, Chilling Rain was going to a thousand, Monarch was going to a million, I, I don't know, uh, MetaZoo was going to 50 million with Jeff Bezos, and uh, Morcana was going to a billion, and uh, I should have bought, uh, I don't know, Cons of Tarkir with Magic, and it didn't go to a thousand. I'm trying to pick dramatic examples. You know, we don't want to focus on the good ones. Um, you know, those people may have, maybe they picked one of those things and went all in, and either it went down in price or stayed the same and it didn't work out. And they are holding that against me as the, you know, Rudy really pushed me to make those decisions because he's on the internet. So I think there's people who are really angry about that. Um, I also think a lot of it is just there are people out there similar. This was something I learned in restaurants when I was in high school. And um, I worked at Perkins um, Breakfast here in Florida. And I was selling breakfast and as a server, you know, serving pancakes and eggs in the morning on the weekend to make extra money to buy magic cards. Um, something I had learned was, you know, and one of the managers taught me this on like the first 30 days. I was a brand new server and I was nervous and everything. I was young, 16, and trying to wait tables in high school and all that to make money. And um, I remember very clearly when um, I had my first couple angry tables and their check was comped at Perkins and their breakfast was free and... They were all upset and yelling and, you know, and I was in the back of the restaurant like freaking out. And, you know, I remember that manager sitting me down and he told me, Rudy, you need to understand something. Um, there are people and customers you will run into in this world. They are going to hate you. They want the minute they either walk through that front door, signed up for Patreon or clicked on your video or went to the local Walmart. There are customers that you will not be able to make happy. There are people who are just going to dislike you for how you look, how you sound, how you talk, how you walk to the table and say hello. There are going to be people, no matter what you serve and what kind of food and how perfect or good or bad, it's overcooked, undercooked, or absolutely perfect, they are already in the mindset and they've made up their mind of how they're going to feel and whether or not they're going to pay for it or they're just going to cause issues. And that was something that definitely really stuck with me at a young age because that's really helped me in business as I've gotten older because another thing that I was taught when I was actually in college at a brokerage firm and I actually had my real job and became an actual had a you know I dressed nice and all that as, as a licensed advisor and broker I remember that you know I learned from this brokerage firm that the there are clients and customers that you have to let go you have to walk away you cannot have communication a business relationship you can't do any transactions with them. The risk of things going south, fraud. And this firm taught me that, you know, when you have a customer who's unhappy or continues to complain about you, or maybe they're supporting you, but everything you do, they're making comments and they're very disgruntled. On the surface, you may think, oh, free speech and leave it alone. And I did that at the beginning of my Patreon and my card business on YouTube. And I learned the hard way. And, but then I learned that, you know, there are times when it comes to transactional style business and retail, um, you do have to remove certain customers. You have to get, you cannot do business with certain people. And it has nothing to do with how you feel about the person. It's a risk management approach. If somebody is upset with you or saying comments about you or whatever, you cannot engage in a financial transaction because of the risk that person already holds in their attitude towards you, the probability, doesn't mean they're going to do anything bad, 
but the probability of financial loss and bad behavior eventually coming for you is elevated. And when you're in retail, where margins are thin, products are sold at break even, some products are sold at a profit, some are at a loss, you have to really reduce the amount of fraud in the people who have higher probabilities of disliking, stealing, or doing any form of bad behavior against you. Hence why many stores, you know, share customer names and disputes and chargebacks, and it happens today. You know, stores kind of look out for each other, especially in the card world. So I think um, there are many people out there that may have been an, an old viewer of my channel years ago when they didn't like that. You know, I, I, I put a lot of money into Arabian Nights and pushed up the price of Bazaar Baghdad. Um, you know, there are many people that maybe didn't like with Khans of Tarkir, or maybe, uh, what's a good example of something? Maybe they were very angry because of the beginning of Flesh and Blood. Um, in the modern times, you know, it skyrocketed because of me help pushing and pushing that brand to get awareness. And then many other people hate me because the Monarch, which was the third, uh, fourth or fifth Flesh and Blood sale, the fourth set, when that came out, it collapsed and dropped. So we had a very, people were angry that a lot of prices went up due to Rudy's fault. And a lot of people were angry that they bought maybe the fourth set of Flesh and Blood, Monarch, and it tanked. So there are people that are angry on both sides of things that went up and went down. So I think there is a group of people who are legitimately unhappy because of things like that. And they have legit, and they're, they're valid to that reason. And maybe they're an ex-patron, maybe they just used to watch a channel, maybe a friend of a friend told them something bad, maybe they made up a story. So they're all going to be different variables and context, but I think you know, everyone's allowed to have their opinion. But my perspective is just strictly a business standpoint. That, you know, yes, I try to make money. And no, I'm not trying to help your community. No, I'm not trying to pretend I'm here for the community and make you feel good. And I'm trying to do some hug thing. I don't, I don't go into that fake emotional side to try to trick you into trusting me more. You know, I tell you very clearly for the last eight years, you know, I'm doing this to make a living. To make money for myself, my family, and the future. I want the price of cards long term to hold value. And to drift upwards in value. That is not a secret. If you didn't know that, I hate to hit you with breaking news, but you must be that you might be a Timmy if you didn't know that. And that, you know, a lot of people don't like that I say that. A lot of people get very uncomfortable and they're not used to hearing that kind of thing. So when we step back, um, to kind of recap that, um, another thing I want to add too is remember, even to this day. Um, within the first 30 days that this YouTube channel went live at the very beginning, um, immediately the people who were against financial value of collectibles and the moderators of the Facebook groups and Reddits and the Discords, you know, they have everything from the keyword name Rudy and the keyword Alpha Investments. All of these words are, are were flagged within the first 30 to 60 days of me going live in 2016. So anytime anyone would read or ask a question, and those keywords came up, they would either get banned, a temporary suspension, or everybody would dogpile into very negative things about, I don't know, maybe I did something bad to them, their ex, their, their pet goldfish, maybe they think I, I took all their money. There's going to be all kinds of what I like to call kind of internet stories. Um, as with everything on the internet, most things are out of context and most things just simply aren't real. But that, you have, if you don't know any different and you're new to magic, and you go on the main Magic the Censored, I'm sorry, Magic the Gathering Reddit, um, how would you expect someone to feel? You know, they discover a YouTube channel called Alpha Investments, and they're going, oh my god, this guy's got, it's a big channel, been around forever, there's thousands of videos, and, but then, you you know, if you go on to type in Tolarian Community College or any other, he's just the biggest I know of, known him for a long time, I love the man, and I mean, but if you put him, on a Reddit or Facebook group, everybody just says cool and shares videos. But if you put my name or my channel over the last eight years, you would immediately be flagged, banned, or suspended. So when you have situations like that, and we go back to my original concept of not doing anything, not setting the record straight, not trying to go against the, I just let everybody do their thing. And because of that, you know, that ecosystem for the last eight years has held a certain degree of restriction and censorship and taboo towards the name Rudy, 
my channel and my business. So if you don't know any different, I, w I would think that people saying F that guy for, you know, people who have no idea who I am or anything, I think having that attitude and F Rudy and this and that, I would think that's probably a normal reaction based on what feels like you should do if somebody's so bad that you can't talk about it online. So technically that does line up and you can't really fault people for being that way. So even those people who have a very disgruntled, maybe they don't like that I'm so capitalistic, I'm very blunt, maybe because I'm not so, I don't, I don't, you know, on this channel, I don't do giveaways, I don't do charitable promotions, and I don't do sponsorships, I don't tie myself to this and that. You know, that is, you know, the reality is a lot more boring than the fun theories on the internet. So when people have that gener general reaction of F. Rudy, um, I think it's deserved, and I think it's kind of how a normal person should react based on how social media has formed over an eight-year period. All the way back from the first 30 days of this channel, which really didn't even, there wasn't even a Patreon account. I didn't sell anything. We just talked about magic and the price of uh, old boxes of magic and how they would go up. And just the fact that the channel was built around the game pieces and holding financial value, it makes a certain segment of people very angry. Just that basic concept. And no matter what you do, we can I can sell a product that goes up. I can sell a product that goes to zero. I can sell a product that, I don't know, steals your wife. You can sell, and no matter what happens or what you sell, it doesn't really mean anything. I mean, you know, after eight years, I have ran, it has to be in the thousands of sales of every single card game you can think of. And I mean, I don't, you know, and some of them have been huge successes and some of them failed and disappeared. Some of them, tank, some card games have sets that went up and some like Magic and Pokemon and, you know, all these things, you know. Some go in different directions depending on the release. And that is a normal function of any market, you know. And I don't, I, I think it's more of a reflection of the society that we're in in a reflection of what I like to call this modern internet social media era that makes people less social and actually less smart. I think a lot of people out there that are very agitated and have a lot of anxiety and stress and a lot of aggression, um, I think it's disappointing to see, but I understand why they're that way. And you can't really be mad when you see people like that. Because in my experience, most of the time, there's a lot of things happening to that person that's causing them to behave and react that way. What are some good examples? I know over the years, God, I, yeah, I don't want to get into, you know, because there were some examples. I remember, I, like, there were some examples. I had some patrons in, like, 2017, and I think it was on Eternal Masters or something, and they were real angry at something. And because I refused to sell it, or I didn't get enough product to sell it, they went crazy. And then there was another one. I remember my original $100 patron, Mr. Mike. I don't know what happened to him. I hope he's okay. I remember he wrote a blog or something, some internet thing. I met him years ago at a magic event, like 2017. He was, he was, he was a nice, he was one of my original supporters and real nice. And I remember then all of a sudden I woke up one day and that was where the, uh, the Black Lotus signature drama exploded on the internet and everybody came after me because I woke up after doing a collection buy video where I bought a collection in 2017 and there was a signed beta black lotus and had a Chris Rush variant signature where the C had sharper lines and we found other comparables that did match and were even certified by I don't know if it was Beckett or PSA and but anyways long story short I ended up selling that black lotus to Oh God, who bought that? I ended up selling the Black Lotus. And that individual was so angry that I bought that card in this big collection with a bunch of Power 9. And then he was even angrier that I sold it. And then he got then he went in the deep end because I wouldn't sell it to him. And then he went after me for probably a year straight. Trying to bash, post on Reddit, a bunch of different account names trying all these things about fraud and counterfeit signatures. I remember that one. 
Oh, I'll give you guys a good one. And then I had in 2018, that was during the Donald Trump era. I had like five or ten patrons from Mexico. And um, I woke up one morning and I had, God, what was it? I think it was, it was a Pokemon release. And I was shipping, because I was shipping it to Mexico. I had a group of patrons in Mexico. And one of the trackings to Mexico, customs rejected it, and they had to return to sender. And I woke up the next morning, and my email blew up. Like 10 patrons had closed their accounts, and everybody was attacking me because everybody was saying, You're like, Rudy, you're, you're funding the Donald Trump wall, and you're, you're attacking all your Mexican patrons. And I was, I, that's what was going on. And apparently, one of the patrons I had that lived in Mexico took a screenshot of his return to sender rejected Pokemon case in Mexico and coming back to me. And he thought that I was trying to get rid of all their stuff or take his product back because customs had rejected it. And then him, he, he reported online or posted on Reddit and Facebook and everybody closed their account. I remember that one. <laughs> but the point of the story is I can go on all day. I don't have a clear answer. Those are my theories. I appreciate you all. I can, if you got more stories like that, I guess you guys can contact me in the future. Or I'll make a video on weird stories I've been through. Have a beautiful day.